Hello, and welcome to the continuation of Rygate College's post-Easter um, work for maths. This is actually a post-half-term work where we are starting to look at the applied units for the second year of the A-level maths content. What we're going to be looking at for the first two weeks is a little bit of mechanics. Then weeks three and four, we'll start to look at statistics. We won't get all of each of those sections done, but we'll get a, a decent chunk done, which will allow us to save some time later in the year and get those ideas in your heads straight away. What we're going to look at today is the first topic of mechanics, which is something called moments. Now, moments are known as sometimes also known as a turning force or a turning effect. It's how we measure the effect a force has on turning something. You may have also heard this called torque, um, particularly if you do any sort of um, handiwork with things like bikes or engines or anything like that. You may well have heard the term torque before. But we, we call it moment. So, how do we calculate it? So, a moment... We always need to refer to moments about a point. So, we're looking at this point here, P. So, we are working on the moment about... moment about the point P. If we had a different point here and we calculated the moment about that, we would get a different value. So we've got this force here. Now let's imagine that this is on a piece of paper. We have a fixed pivot here and we have a force acting in this direction. If we do that, the paper is going to turn. Okay, it's not gonna the paper is not gonna move, it's not gonna move in this direction because it's fixed. This force causes the piece of paper to turn. Okay. Which is what moments are all about. Now we'll look at some terminology of kind of things like a piece of paper later, but let's just talk about the moments. Something to think about. What is going to affect the size of the moment? Well, one thing is going to be how big the force is. So the force, the size of the force affects how big the moment is and how much it turns. Now, if you think about sitting on a seesaw, maybe from the playground when you were a child, when you were smaller, you think, okay, well, if I sit at the end, the seesaw moves really easily. If I sit it towards the middle, towards the pivot, it doesn't move so much. So the distance you are away from the pivot is important. But it is a specific distance that we talk about. It is the shortest distance from the force to the pivot. which we call D. So this is the shortest distance. But that's di more difficult to think about kind of holistically. Better is to think about, well, how can we calculate the shortest distance? The shortest distance from a point to a line is at right angles. So D is the perpendicular distance from the force to the point okay now as the as you get further away it becomes easier to turn okay if you think about a screwdriver or a, or a, a wrench or something like that if you hold the wrench right next to where you're trying to screw in a bolt or something, you need to put a lot of force in. OK, 
Okay, if you hold the wrench further away, you have to do less work to get the same amount of turn. So the bigger the distance, the more it turns. The bigger the force, the more it turns. So the moment is equal to the product of force and distance. And that's how we calculate moment. Okay, moment is force times the perpendicular distance. Now you need to learn this formula. It's not a particularly difficult formula, but you do need to learn it. There isn't really a symbol for moment that we use. Um, it's just called moment. Now typically, so this is often what we do when we're working on a piece of paper or a flat surface. Now a flat surface we tend to call a lamina. Okay, so a lamina is a flat surface that has no width. So you can think about this as a piece of paper. Okay, a solid, non-bendy piece of paper. Sometimes, though, we have a situation like this, where we have our point, but we have something solid connecting into it. It doesn't have to be either. could be a point and a lamina again, but for the purposes of this, we will say this is a rod. Okay, rod is what we use for any sort of solid stick-like thing. So a rod could be a stick, a piece of iron, could be a chain that's taut, um, lots of things like that. But we could be working with a force that's acting at an angle. The difficulty here is moment is still force times perpendicular distance. But this distance here, so let's call this D, that distance is not the shortest distance from P to the force. Okay, so this is the distance we need to find. So let's think about this. This is a right angle triangle, and we know what the hypotenuse is. This distance is opposite the angle. So it's D sine theta. Okay. So we now know in this case that the moment is going to be equal to force times D sine theta. Okay, so this is how I do moments. You can do moments by resolving the force instead of the distance. So this is the same example that we just did, but we're going to do it by resolving the force instead of resolving the distance. So we've got the same problem. We have a force acting at an angle and our point of contact is a certain distance away from p. Here, we want to we want to get to a force times the perpendicular distance. So if we think, okay, we have this distance, we want the force that is perpendicular to that distance, which is this part here. Okay, so we're looking for this component of the force. Now, because of um, and we got our z here. This here is also theta. Again, because of Pythagoras, this is the hypotenuse. This is f, because we know the force. This is our angle. We have the opposite force. So this is f sine theta. So the force that is perpendicular to the distance is f sine theta. So in this case, the moment is f sine theta times d, which is exactly the same as f times d sine theta, which is what we had before. So it really doesn't matter which you do, just 
be consistent. As I said, I will always, apart from in a very, very specific case that we may look at um, this week, I'll resolve distances. Apart from that one case where I will resolve forces because I find it works a bit better. What we're going to do now is just a couple of very basic examples to get you used to calculating and practicing moments. So this first example is very, very straightforward. We want to calculate the moment of this force around the point P. So we've got our force, which is 6 newtons, times by our perpendicular distance. So our moment is force times distance, which is going to be 6 times 3, which is 18. Now, this is where we get to discuss a little bit more on top of what we've already, uh, the general forms that we've already looked at. First off, we're doing mechanics. This is an applied unit, so we need units. What are the units of moment? Well, we are doing a force in newtons times a distance in meters. So the units are newton meters. The other thing as well, because we are turning, we can see here this force is going to make the paper or the lamina turn this way, or whatever it is that it is turning. It's going to make it turn this way. If the force was going in the opposite direction, it would turn in the opposite way. So we need to also identify which direction we are turning it. And in this case, the force is making it turn this way. So we are our turn is going to happen in this direction, which is anti-clockwise. You can generally get away with putting ACW for anti-clockwise. I tend to write it out. So let's look at a second example here of this more angular type. So we've got our force, 12 newtons here. We've got our distance of 8 meters. So in this case, because it's at an angle, oops. We're going to have moment is force times d sine theta. So our force is 12 newtons. The distance is 8 sine 35. Okay, which we stick in our calculators. Oops. Making sure that we have moved from radians mode to degrees mode. Typically, mechanics, we work in degrees. Not always, but very, very typically. So we're going to do 12 times 8 sine 35. And we get 53, sorry, 55.06. So... 55.1 newton meters, and this is going to make it turn this way. So we're going clockwise. And that's kind of it for the basics of moments. Everything else that we're going to do is applying this or these two rules. Looking at when moments cancel out, when they simplify, what happens if there is moments left over? And that's what we'll get onto in the next video. But for now, what I'd like you to do, please, is have a practice of this basic moments stuff. So, exercise 4A, page 72, in the Stats and Mechanics Year 2 textbook. Not the pure anymore, the Stats and Mechanics. And I'd like you just to do questions 1... A and B, 2, A and B, and question 3. It's not a long exercise, so if you feel like you need more practice in this, do more of it. Okay, But this is the limited amount that I would like you to do. And as I said, next video we'll look at using these properties to do various things.